Hi, I'm Brad Rossi. Thanks for tuning in again today. I'm creating an entire playlist all around my Amazon number one best-selling book, which I'm very proud of, Beyond Money. Beyond Money is a book that I was inspired to write. It's an um, inspiration to help others learn from what I've learned in my 20 plus years as a certified financial planner. I also wrote it so that my college age kids, if they never ask me about finances, they will have a resource or guide that they can turn to and use later in life when they're ready to make these types of decisions. In the book Beyond Money, what you'll find if you happen to read it is a story about two gentlemen that are in the hospital. One is a senior citizen, really on his deathbed, talking to a much younger man who's been diagnosed with a bad disease and he may or may not make it. And the older gentleman throughout the book is sharing life lessons, both about how to spend your time, your family time, and of course financial advice as well. And for the purpose of these videos, I'm going to hit on the financial side, of course. Today's video is from chapter one, lifestyle lessons. Some of the key parts of the lifestyle lessons that we're going to talk about include a phrase called big hat, no cattle, one called managing your cash flow, budgeting, and money in marriage. Those are all part of chapter one. Let me jump right in and start with big hat, no cattle. If you're from Texas, you've definitely heard that saying. You may have also heard that saying in a book called The Millionaire Next Door, which talks about millionaires in this country and how most of them have a lot of cattle to go with their big hat. Big hat, no cattle means you're a big spender. You got a big house with a big mortgage or fancy cars, all the stuff that shows off that you may have money. I call it having affluenza, trying to appear affluent when you're really not. The people who do this oftentimes have no cattle. In other words, they have no money saved relative to what they've been making. And this is not obviously healthy for the long run. As a matter of fact, one staggering statistic is that 75% of Americans unfortunately are living paycheck to paycheck. And when I define wealth, I think about the answer to one simple question. How long could you go without your paycheck? Before you answer that and get upset or sad, realize that you're not alone, but you need to make a change if you're not happy with your answer. And that's where I'm going to jump right in to the idea of budgeting. By budgeting, some people like to worry about their, their expenses. I like to look at their, the control of your discretionary expenses. This is where money is just blown all over the place. I'd like you to think of it as a game for everything you purchase that's not a bill. Anything at a cash register or it's online purchase or anything like that. All these advertisers are trying desperately to give you, to get you to spend your hard-earned money on something that you may not need. Unfortunately, we lose that battle all the time. I think and write about this in the book that one of the big reasons I believe is credit cards. Credit cards are horrible. I don't care about the points you might earn. You'd be much better off not spending the money in most cases. When you go to the grocery store and buy for your family, there's a reason why the milk's at the back of the store. It's so that you walk by all kinds of sales, two for one for this, 50% off on that, to try and tempt you to buy things that you don't really need. I'm very lucky. I grew up with a mother who had a grocery list. And literally, she planned it out. She wrote out what she needed for every day of the week. She bought a few other snacks, and that was about it. Okay? Nobody nowadays ever has a grocery list. They go to the store, they want to buy a few things, they end up with a cart full. This is why most people don't have any money saved, or not nearly enough. This is why they're living paycheck to paycheck. So my first idea for you is to control your discretionary expenses is leave your credit card at home. Don't use your credit card, except for gas. It's realistic that you don't want to go up to the cash register at the gas station. Try spending cash, literally cash. Go to the ATM once every two weeks, pull out the cash you need to spend, and live on it. All of a sudden what happens is you'll prioritize. You'll spend your money on what's most important, but you'll say no to some things that you hadn't been saying no to in the past 
because you know you only have a finite amount of money. So that's my first tip. Leave your credit card at home. Second tip is spend cash for your discretionary purchases. Watch yourself. You'll be saying no all the time to things you didn't used to say no to. Now the next step is, well, how do we build a savings? How do we, how do we start to grow some money? Well, the only way I know to successfully do that is to have it done automatically. For those people that do save, the majority of them are only able to do so because it comes out of their paycheck to go into the 401k before they've ever seen it. If it makes it to their checking account, raise your hand if this is you, it gets spent. The exception being there's a way to fix this. This is the way I've done it for my whole life. For all my clients, it works. With whatever investment account you're going to use, whether it be a brokerage account, a health savings account, uh, a dividend reinvestment plan, you name it, or a savings account for that matter, have it pulled directly out of your checking account on a certain day of the month. Make it automatic so you don't have to do anything. Whether it's $100 a month, $1,000 a month, whatever the amount is that you can afford, start doing that. At a minimum, we need to be saving 10% of what we make. If you want to really have it made, save 15 or 20%, then down the road, you'll have a lot more options. Whether that means you can afford to retire early, buy a vacation house, to really fund things with your money. The sooner you start, the better. Last thing I want to point out is money and marriage. I've been married now for almost 24 years. As I mentioned earlier, I grew up in a frugal household, as did my wife. One of the other tips in the book, The Millionaire Next Door, that I thought was great was to marry someone more frugal than you. It's a great piece of advice. Oftentimes what I found in a marriage, if the wife is the one following the money and paying the bills, things tend to be run very tight. It's a tight ship. When that's not the case and the wife has no idea where the money's going, it sometimes goes and goes and goes. So I like it best when both spouses ideally are involved in the money decision making and both of them are writing bills. If one of you is doing it and hasn't been doing it forever, let the other one in. Let the other person, let the other spouse pay the bills for a month so that there's a awareness of where the money goes. So now that you're saving money by paying cash and not using credit cards so you don't have a big credit card balance, take that money you used to use on credit cards, the savings, and automatically save it. Now when I'm doing this with a spouse, I would create three allowances, three cash allowances. His, hers, and ours. So whoever's buying the groceries has the biggest allowance. Why? Because that's the biggest expense. Um, I can get by on next to no money with my lunches that I spend, or you can pack a lunch if you really want to save money. Eat breakfast at home. Don't eat out so much. There's a lot of ways to curb things. But his, hers, and ours. Ours is your couple's night out. You're spending money. Okay, very, very important to have because you don't want to take it out of yours. She doesn't want to give it up out of hers. That way, if each spouse is only spending what they were allotted, the other spouse doesn't really care so much how it's being spent because they're only spending what was given to them in the first place. It's a wonderful system, and it keeps that that uh, potential issue out of the marriage, which I think is great. So in summary, cash flow is key to financial success. The way you manage it, or if you don't manage it, your chances are you're never going to be successful financially. The next movie, re I'm sorry, movie related, the next video related to my book, Beyond Money, is coming out soon. It's going to be all about saving. Lots of tips and strategies for you to save. I hope you subscribe to my YouTube channel and give me a like. And if you have a question, by all means, ask me the question. I'm pretty darn good about getting back to you on those. I hope 2020 is very good to you. Thanks for listening.